Hey guys, so we're back and this time I, I wanted to share with you kind of uh, something that I've been working on lately and essentially what I've been doing as, uh, during the weekend anyway, I've been kind of rewriting my resume and preparing some applications. So really what I wanted to show you was kind of how to build a nice looking uh, resume if you want again to use on your professional career or something like that. And uh, what, uh, the way in which I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you kind of a LaTeX template. And uh, I think that LaTeX is very superior to Word when it comes to kind of these kinds of documents that you carry over with you throughout your life. Because usually once you have a, a resume set up, you really don't change it that much. So the idea about LaTeX is that it's very easy to move things around and to change stuff after the document is already there because all the typesetting is done in advance. And uh, if you don't know what typesetting is, Typesetting essentially equates to kind of uh, putting things on the page and rendering words. So for example, if you want a, a specific keyword to appear centered and maybe bold in your page, this is what typesetting does. So it kind of puts things on the page and renders it graphically. And uh, LaTeX is really, really good at that because again, you kind of uh, give commands that tell the LaTeX compiler how you, what you want the page to look like, and then you only think about the contents. So it's much simpler, again, uh, in terms of setup, once you have it kind of the way you want. And one, things that, one thing that comes with that is kind of this little package, which is called the Modern CV. And Modern CV is a package for LaTeX, so it's, it's essentially kind of a library if you're thinking of uh, programming languages. And it essentially adds features to LaTeX that allows you to kind of uh, write very nice looking resumes and stuff. So this is again the package, uh, the package on the repository. If you want to download it and use it locally, you guys who have already have a LaTeX setup, you know how to do that. So you just download the zip, and you drop it again on the same file that you're on the same directory where you're editing your CV, for example. But I'm assuming that you're a total beginner. So in the in the case you you have any questions regarding LaTeX, again, we'll kind of go through the basics and I'll show you what it looks like and how you can modify stuff. So not only Modern CV has kind of this package, it also has a template that comes with it. And the, the, the template is uh, at this place. So I'm going to put all of these links in the description if any of you are interested. And this is a modern, C, uh, this is a CV, a resume and cover letter kind of template. So you notice that this is what it looks like again, once you finish. So as an example, this is the template. You notice that it looks very fancy, at least to me, I like the way it, lo it looks by default. So you have you can put in pictures. You have a choice whether or not to put them. Uh, I know that there are some countries where you don't really put pictures in resumes, but in some that's the case. So you also can put in uh, again you put names, titles. You can even put quotations. And we're going to see what this looks like in terms of LaTeX. So if I close out of that, and what I recommend to you if you're a beginner on LaTeX is that you use Overleaf because Overleaf is essentially kind of a Google Docs for LaTeX. So you're editing your kind of LaTeX source file on the cloud and uh, the, the cloud already has everything installed. So you don't need to install any packages or anything like that. So let's try this. Let's open that in Overleaf. And you do need an Overleaf account, which is free. So you just need to, again, register before doing that. Or you, you can even sign in using Facebook or Google, I believe. I don't recommend that, but if you want, you can. So that's what it looks like. Now, once we, we're set up in Overleaf, now what you notice is I'm going to close out of this kind of file tree. We'll cover that later. But as of right now, you'll notice that there are kind of two windows on Overleaf. And essentially, uh, as I was saying, LaTeX is kind of like a programming language. So here on the left, what you'll see is kind of the, essentially the source code. So this is the, this is the set of LaTeX, uh, LaTeX's commands that you wrote in order to get this PDF to look like this. So essentially, uh, as I was saying, LaTeX describes a document and then the compiler kind of uh, generates the documents based on that description. And we're going to see how it works in a while. But what you notice is that first things first, you read your document from top to bottom. So the source, the the further to the top again of the source, the further to the top you're getting of the, um, of the PDF. Now, not everything that, not every function call writes uh, things to your PDF. So this is something that you need to be aware. Instead, some function calls they are used, for example, to tell, for example, the compiler, the compiler what type of, uh, what uh, size of page you want, for example. This is the case for this one. So this document class, kind of uh, this, uh, 
description. It doesn't really do anything. It just sets the paper size to be A4. It sets the font and it sets again other, other parameters. So this is the case for some of these. You notice that there are two of these variables, so modern CV style. This essentially dictates kind of what the theme of your CV looks like. So you notice that we have kind of this default theme, which is the casual one, but we can change it to be, for example, a banking style. And the banking style is one that I think that is the most kind of uh, normal, I would say the most classical anyway, because it's the one that people are used to. So once you change the variable, I change the, the modern CV style from casual to banking. What I'm going to do is I'm going to recompile the document. I can press this button here. And it's it takes a few seconds, but what you'll notice is that things are going to change. So by changing the theme, I actually changed kind of the layout of this uh, of this resume. And now it's looking more like a list, more like a, a note style kind of um, resume. And you can do thing and you can do the same thing again. You have other themes, so another theme is classic. You notice that LaTeX has kind of uh, commentaries. So comments is kind of, uh, they are defined by this kind of a keyword. So by the percent sign. And after that, this none of this text is read by the compiler. Rather, it is you who are supposed to kind of who are supposed to read essentially this text in order to figure out how the package works. So the the template is very nice enough in that it, it kind of comments on everything that you should be changing so that you don't get lost if you don't know any LaTeX. So this is what the classic uh, kind of template looks like. This is the one I use. So you notice that the difference is that on the first one, we had kind of the additional information in gray down here, but now it moved here to the top. And I can also change the color. So for example, I can set it to purple. And additionally, not only you can recompile by pressing the button, you can also uh, press Control and then S on your keyboard. And this is going to automatically save and recompile the document. Notice that this is what it looks like in purple. So the blues are changed with purple and that's all. Notice that I double clicked on education and this essentially kind of redirected me to the point in the source code where education is. So in this case, I can use this to kind of browse the PDF and then search for the function that generates something. So if I click on this masters of commerce, it's defined by this function here on the kind of source code. So just by reading here and, compare, and comparing again to kind of the PDF, you can get an idea of what you should be changing. So this is, again, these are kind of a, this is a date range. Again, this is supposed to be the masters or whatever education you had. And then you can even give some description after. So you notice that this is, the, these are separated by arguments. So this is a function call in, in uh, that's defined in modern CV. And uh, it essentially takes in these arguments. So the first argument is what comes here. The second argument is what comes here. The third argument is what comes here. And you notice that they are typeset differently. So the second item is going to be bold. The third item is going to be in kind of italic. And uh, this is very nice because you don't need to put things in place manually. So this function is doing that for you. Uh, this is one cool aspect of LaTeX. If you have uh, any questions again regarding this, uh, of course, you can always ask questions on the comments, but do take a look at the at the kind of source code, because I think that this is pretty self-explanatory uh, expl once you get to it and once you pay attention to kind of comparing what these two look like. Now, if we go back to the top a little bit, you notice that we also have kind of a cover letter template. And uh, you can use this, so you notice that if we go all the way to the top, the first thing that you read by that you see by looking at the source, you see again these variables, so the the theme and the purple, uh, the coloring. So what you also have is you can set your name and contact information, and in fact this is very interesting because you can set kind of your names here as variables, and then you use them later without needing to retype them. So for example, this individual is named John Smith. You notice that the, the the signature here is John Smith. And you also notice that here on the personal information, you have John Smith. Also here you have John Smith. So essentially, uh, all of this has been written by LaTeX and not by you. So I did not have to copy paste my name everywhere and this kind of stuff. If we go, so again, you define kind of these variables here on the top. If you don't want to use any of these, for example, if you don't have a fax, which is defined here, you can just remove the variable, save again. And what you notice is that here on the on the information, the entry for facts is going to disappear. So in case you don't need any of those. 
and then you just change again information inside of this little kind of a curly break brackets as you need to change them so your first name your family name again the title so this is going to be for example the job post that you're applying to or maybe again what is your main role as a if you're an engineer maybe something like that after the begin document is when we begin seeing things being printed to the page. So this is what kind of defines, if you write anything outside of a begin document, you're going to get an error or it's not going to display. So uh, again, if we go to the beginning of this document again, you have kind of a cover letter and you notice that there is this little function, make letter title, and this is what prints all of this. So from HR department all the way to dear sir or madam, this is all written by this. And it's written based on the variables that you defined on top. So notice that, for example, the recipient HR department, corporation, excuse, excuse me, this information is shown up here. And you can also set the date. So the date on LaTeX, you also have a little function, which is called backslash today. And functions, they are defined by using backslashes on LaTeX, just in case you haven't noticed yet. So by using this function, I'm setting the date to be the actual date of today. So the computer is going to essentially look what day it is. It is going to paste it here. You don't need to manually change the date if you write the document in a different uh, day than what you started. So again, you can change it, for example, closing and opening phrases. Most of this is pretty self-explanatory. So one thing that's, uh, that, can, that you may not know is that uh, you have kind of this lorem ipsum stuff. And this is essentially Latin blind text. So notice that uh, this is used mainly just to fill in the page. But if you were to write a cover letter using this template, what you would do is you would most likely get rid of these two lines and then start typing. So this is my new cover letter as an example. And then I'm going to copy and paste that. So notice that now I got a new cover letter that, uh, that I customized. So I just customized the text again. I removed that lower and ipsum stuff. And now I can change. And now if I wanted, I could change the variables. For example, I could change the recipient information. Uh, maybe I could change I can anything. So I can even change these kind of uh, definitions. And if we go a bit further, so we actually have the actual resume uh, set up. And the first thing that happens is you make a call. Notice that, uh, by the way, before we get to that, you notice that there is a there is a page break between the cover letter and the the resume. This is because there is this little function call, which is called new page. So new page on LaTeX, it essentially, as the name implies, uh, creates a new jumps to the next page on your PDF. So right after that, we have a make CV title, and this function is what prints all of this essentially. So it prints your name, your title, again, the quote, the quote, maybe your picture and also the information. Finally, you notice that on LaTeX, you also have this kind of a, uh, in the case of this package, rather, you have this little function, which is called section. If you were to write a section on plain LaTeX, it would not look like this on the PDF, but on the scope of this document, because we're using modern CV, Modern CV is a package that actually redefines what a section looks like in a way that whenever you type in section education here on the left, you get kind of this fancy little line and you also get the coloring on your on your PDF. So this is what it looks like. And you have functions again. So I was talking about the CV entry before. You notice that you have five arguments again. You can compare it left, you can compare it left to right if you want to see kind of what corresponds to what. And uh, you have other uh, other functions such as CV entry again. I believe that most of them, they are rather intuitive because you have this kind of example here on the right. And uh, before we get to anything else, so I think that I can leave you uh, just by showing this off because, um, again, it's really self-explanatory, uh, in my opinion. You just need to pay attention to what's on the left and what's on the right. But additionally, one very specific thing on LaTeX is that you have lists. So I'm, I'm just going to cover lists and then I'll show you how to put in images. And uh, going to lists, so you notice that here we have kind of a an ordered list, which means a bulleted list. And uh, you define lists in LaTeX by using an environment. Now, environments, they are enclosed usually by these tags, which are called begin and end. So you notice that there is a big list 
here on the left. That's the big list. And this list is uh, it corresponds to this part of the code. So we have a begin itemize, and an itemize is again a bulleted list, essentially. So you notice that you have this big list, and then you have a smaller list inside the big list. So this is where it is. Excuse me. And uh, you notice that th this is because we are starting a second layer of listing inside of the list that we already started. So there is a second begin itemize that goes from here to here. <clears throat> and finally, there is a third layer of listing that's, that's, that contains these two items. So this is defined inside of the other layer of listing, and it's here. This is just so you know, that's how lists work in LaTeX. If you ever want to use any, you can just again copy and paste this, this code and uh, change it around as you need. Finally, if you if there uh, there are no such examples here on this document, but if you want to put a specific word in a description, either in bold or in italic, so let's say that I want to come to this part miscellaneous, and then uh, maybe this this experience here between 20, uh, 2010 and twenty eleven, what I can do is if I want to say put courageous inside of uh, let's say if I want to emphasize this word, I can put it in bold, for example. I can use the function which is called backslash text bf, and then I can then close the word that I want to put in bold face with uh, the curly brackets. So if I do so now, I am hitting Control S to save. Notice that now I do need to put in the correct command text, and then if I recompile that, you notice that it's going to appear bold. The same thing can be done if you want italic. So if you want to italicize anything, let's say that I want to italicize the development, I can use the text IT function and then enclose whatever I want into curly brackets. And this is what it looks like again on the final PDF. Finally, I was showing that you can put in pictures in your, in your resume. So if you want, you can look at this uh, to the left. There is the, what is called the tree file. And essentially, LaTeX, when it looks at pictures, it looks at pictures in the file system. So you need to kind of upload your picture to the to the little to the little directory that Overleaf manages, and then it will be able to refer to that image. If I were to show you the picture definition, notice that this is where it's defined. So there is the variable photo, and then this is what defines the size. So this is the size in in pixels. And uh, you notice that this is the path within the file system that it, see, that it sees. So here on the left, we are currently on the, um, on the file cv7.tech. And you notice that there is a folder on top of it. So if I open this, there is a picture. And this is what appears there. If I wanted to upload a picture, I would go to here, hit upload. And then I select the picture from my computer. I give it a name, for example, test.png, uh, something like that. And then I would write the test. So I wouldn't write the extension. I would just write again the name of the of the image. I think I could. I can also write the extension if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I'm not entirely sure. So, but this is again how you would go about uploading images if you want to put in a custom picture on your resume. Now, finally, once you you've done all the editing that you need, the the last thing that you do is you download the PDF. So you can hit this button here on the top, and then it's going to generate again a nice looking PDF. If I do this right now, I'm going to download it really fast. Notice that I have kind of the PDF of what my, of what the, the resume looks like. So thank you very much, guys. This was uh, this was essentially to give you guys an idea. If any of you are beginning out with LaTeX, I think that it's a pretty nice language to use again if you if you're using kind of uh, resumes and if you're doing a, a applications. I think that this looks, not not only this looks very nice on the paper, I think it catches recruiters' eyes, but it's also very easy to maintain, I would say. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.